Hello, I'm Nikolai and I'm directing Memoirs of an Asian Football Casual here at Curve. Hi, I'm Rias Khan, author of Khan Memoirs of an Asian Casual. Hi, my name's Harit Dio and I'm playing Suf Khan. Hey, my name's Jay Vasani and I'm playing Rias Khan. I'm Dougal Irvin and I'm the writer of Memoirs of an Asian Football Casual. Oh, he's the actors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're right, so they came were... down here. Yeah. And wow. See all that? That was, was what I was imagining. The right whole the scene. thing like, was oh. packed. There's so many of them. A thousand people. That, a thousand young men. Of yeah, all I seen was heads. Yeah. Just, it was the terrifying. biggest thing I've ever seen in my life. It was terrifying because there were so many fans. The police could not control all the fans. So what would happen is basically they'd break away. Gangs of youth would break away. So it's well, difficult. It's another to good lesson of not judging a book ever by its, by its cover yeah. because you just don't know what somebody's about or yeah, who course. they are by the way they look or how they're I mean, dressed. You think about it, completely... they had nice hairstyles, Italian design labels. Like yeah. you're saying, they were middle class. Yeah. Some um, middle class, some are bank, uh, working in banks, some working in hospitals. Being racially abused walking around these streets and on the bus to school and everything, did, were you, did you feel then that the, the baby squad sort of did offer yeah. a sense of not shelter, I mean that sounds sort of too um, protection. lightweight, but protection yeah. from It did, that. yes. And the sense of identity and I guess belonging. Yeah, and also people started respecting him because he told him, if we fight him we have to fight all these lot as right. well. Yeah. Because in those days, before the casual culture came, you had a gang of white lads, you had a gang of black and Asian lads. Because the black and Asian lads used to stick together because of all the racism and stuff. And then slowly, it's, that all just amalgamated in one big group. So you'd have cocktail, you have different gangs here, but people are all getting on. Whereas nowadays we have a whole section of our mass media which uses underhand oh, and yes. subtle and subversive yep. Yep. terms. And Spot on. <coughs> there is racial abuse and hatred and it's coming through the back door. Yeah. You knew exactly. straight away, but yeah. now you don't know. Yeah. Yes. It must be difficult in the acting field. I mean, there's not many Asian actors out there anyway, no. so it must be really hard for you to get certain roles. Um, you know, I'm playing a, lo I'm a local less lad myself and it kind of hits true to kind of the racial tensions in the 80s and how, how it was growing up in the society as a minority ethnic. I think the people of Leicester will empathise with it. It's provocative, it's uh, funny yeah. and just a really great play, great writing. Yeah. Like Rio said earlier, it's, it's real. Yeah. Uh, they don't over-dramatise it, it's not, it's not a false perception of nah. you know, a stereotypical Asian guy. Because this story, you know, it's not been told for our parents. Exactly. Um, It'll be good for the younger generation as well, I guess. Yeah, yeah. They will empathise with it and you know know how it was back then. Yeah. And how it's changed today. Yeah, and I don't feel like our generation know enough about it either. It was amazing in our own This is where we stand around. That's all the lads used to live around right. here. The lads they stand around with. I see. They're all from this area. Right. We used to have play fights out here, like a pre-warmer for football. So you see a gang of like 20 people fighting here, just play fighting. People used to walk by and what are they doing? They're crazy. How would you acquire knowledge about different firms? We about... wouldn't get an intel. It wasn't, so... wasn't pre-organised. Right. It was disorganised. I see. But it worked. We'd come, chips, come in here smell, not... smelling of Draco Noir or Ralph Wren aftershave, yeah. looking smart and coming out smelling like fish and chips. Because it's, so, it's fascinating for me learning all about the culture and your world because it's like it's all like contradictions like you go in the chip shop smelling of Ralph Lauren and you come out stinking of vinegar and like you'd go all to this trouble to make yourself look a certain way and you know really smart and you know the perfect trains all that and then you get into a scuffle where presumably it things are getting ripped, ripped. it's all getting yeah. torn to shreds and your yeah. trainers are getting battered for me it was all brand new it was like I'm a different person I became somewhere different to that little Asian kid shy boy studious kid that living at home being told what to do all the time to this completely different person it was like it's, it's a good all, costume, isn't it? When an actor yeah, puts on a exactly. costume and their clothes fit and they feel right and they inhabit the character through the costume, Spot it's on. exactly that. People that say the football hooligans were violent, they were thugs around beach, smashing up windows. We never did that. Yeah. We respected our shopkeepers. We all, all shopkeepers knew us. We respected the people that walked up and down here. We did, was not. We were. And they liked it because we was polite. We was, yes. we was brought up with the right manners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the guys are with, they're from different cultures, West Indian. Black, Irish, white. Nalbro has always been multicultural. Lots of students. It was a good laugh living around here. It wasn't violent. It wasn't, you know, it was a nice little area. There's more uh, influx of immigrants now, which is not a bad thing. Uh -huh. It's good because it brings yeah, more yeah. diversity into the area. Yeah. Here we are, Filbert Street. That's where it was. That Just here, yeah. That's the original car park. That's where the ground was there, where the flats are on the grasses. Wow. Yeah, I know. Wow. Things like that memories.
but then in the 70s, you know, there was the um, the culture really of uh, groups of lads going down to football on their own more. And then of course, you know, during the 80s, it got it got quite violent. It got quite violent, yeah. quite unpleasant, and yeah. uh, families started stop coming down. Yeah. Trouble. Yeah. But you know, though, in those days there was a lot of racism, there was a lot of homophobic stuff, and yeah. then of course they started segregating the ground, and then, you know, you then got the Taylor Report, and then almost the reinvention of football, really. So yeah. the football now, you know, is, is, is very, very different. But well, it, there, there, was the, there was the undercurrent right. that was always, always there. Yeah. You know, the fact you had police, police, horses, masses of escorted fans. During the game, we'd be sitting there watching the game, but then yeah. you know there'd be away fans sitting next to you, and you know there'd be a scuffle, there'd be a yeah. breakout violence. Leicester in the 1970s was, um, I mean now it's a, you know, it's a really vibrant multicultural city to live in, but in the 1970s and 1980s, if that wasn't the case, yeah. you'd see National Front people selling their stuff on street corners as you approach the game. They were, they were a gang of teenagers and teenagers are always counterculture. Yeah. And at the time the, the culture was, 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 you know, systemic racism and they were standing up for their identities by, yeah. by clashing in this way. And I think the the contrast between the 1980s, where you had sort of people walking to a half-empty stadium with gangs of marauding kids sort of running up and down the street, and what happened in 2016 when you got a quarter of a million yes. people on Victoria Park, which brought yeah. every yeah. every um, section of Leicester society together. Yeah. You know, in terms of in terms of race, in terms of age, in terms of in terms of uh, gender, in terms of everything. Yeah. And if you could have been around in the 1980s and projected yourself forward. You could never have imagined that. You yeah. could never, yes. ever have imagined that. So what's it like for you to play me and you to play my brother and other multiple roles? So you think you just film my boots then, Gio? Try to. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave that for you to decide. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the script's done so well that you get a picture anyway. Yeah. Like seeing it as it actually is, setting the image of it, and when you describe, you know, running up and down these streets and fans coming from both sides. Yeah. It just, you can like feel the atmosphere as you're talking about it. <laughs> Football's just like, you know, theatre, you've got like the half time, the interval, you've got your subs, your understudies, you've got the manager, programs, like the director, yeah. you've got your <laughs> yeah. programmes yeah. and you, you know, you've got your sort of leading actor and your supporting roles, you know, it's really, yeah. it's exhilarating. And